I promised an update on my six input uh, mixing hot end and uh, this is it. Before I get into that, I just want to make it clear that the, all this stuff I'm doing with hot ends is just um, for my own personal use. Um, that especially applies to the two input one, um, which, as I said in the last video, uh, made it quite clear that that uses two modified slice engineering heat breaks. Um, and slice engineering obviously want to protect their intellectual property. And they've been suffering lately from some very aggressive cloners that uh, disregard their intellectual property and they're just making copies of, uh, of their products. So for that reason, I'm not going to be putting anything else on YouTube about my dual input hot end. Um, so it, it uses slice engineering parts, um, albeit modified, but we don't want to give the cloners um, ideas. So if that dual input hot end turned out to be um, quite good, which I, I hope it will be, nobody could actually make that without infringing on Slice Engineering's intellectual property. So for that reason, I'm just not going to put any more updates on YouTube about that dual input hot end. If it works, it works, but I'm going to keep that to myself. If it doesn't work equally, I'm going to keep that to myself. So, having got that out of the way, let's get back to this uh, six input thing that I'm working on. First thing I want to do is give a big shout out to a chap called Paul Coombs, who works for a company called Boya Engineering. Paul contacted me, um, he's seen my blog and seen my YouTube and stuff and said, can I help with making any of the bits that you want? And I went back and, I went back and said, are you serious? Um, they've got all sorts of uh, really good professional CNC machining uh, at Bogier Engineering. And he came back and said, yeah, sure. So um, I was going to make the heat brakes myself, but I want to make them out of stainless steel. And stainless is a not very easy stuff to machine on the equipment that I've got anyway, because it work hard and so you have to be careful not to let the tool dwell and so forth. Uh, anyway, long story short, I said, yeah, I could do some heat brakes making and um, maybe also a plate. I probably could have made the plate, but anyway, Paul came back and said, yeah, sure. So I'd already bought the um, some 10 mil hex stainless steel bar to use. So I posted that off to him and uh, sure enough, bless his cotton socks, um, he sent me six heat brakes. Uh, seven heat breaks, in fact, the lump of uh, stainless that I sent him was long enough to make seven, so I've got a spare. And they are beautiful, much better than I could do. And also he made not only one plate, but he made three plates. So he um, sent me those as well, um, which has saved me a job. Here's a couple of pictures. Really nice, really nice quality. Very pleased with these. Thanks again, Paul, and by your engineering. So basically the heat brakes are, um, you've probably seen similar ones. I couldn't actually buy anything like this because I want something that's going to screw in, hence the hexagonal bit. Um, but they needed to have a PTFE liner through them, so the ID needed to be 4 mil. And the only ones I've seen that are similar of uh, just take the filament without the liner, so they're only 2 mil ID. If you recall in the last video, the, um, the heat brakes that I made, I tried to make them a press fit and stuck them in with some high temperature super glue, but um, effectively they came out. Um, the pressure of the filaments quite amazes me actually how much pressure there is inside a hot end, but it actually pushed them out. I'm a bit short of photographs. I took loads of pictures of the hot end as I assembled it. Um, and I took pictures of the failed hot end. Um, and I don't know what happened to those pictures. They're not on my camera SD card. Whether I did something wrong on the camera and the settings or press the wrong button, I don't know. Anyway, so I don't really have a picture of the assembly, but you've seen it all before. So it's the same as the other one, except that these heat brakes screw in. I put them in with some um, 
some Loctite as well around the thread, some high temperature Loctite thread sealant. And then I tried it out and um, managed to get a print out of it. Um, so the first thing I did was to print um, the test part that I used when I started out almost a year ago, it seems, um, using the Darwin 5 color to show off the, um, the stripy toothpaste effect to its worst. The worst combination I could come up with was pink, where you mix red and white together. That seemed to be the killer combination to show up the stripy toothpaste. Things like orange where you mix red and yellow and green where you mix blue and yellow um, didn't actually come out too bad, although it's still fairly stripy, but um, pink was the killer combination. So uh, these are so these are the parts that I produce now. Okay, yeah, it, it's still a bit stripy. It, I didn't really expect it to mix um, terribly well because uh, there's not many stages to the mixing chamber. I've got to get this balance between keeping the volume of molten filament as low as possible and having an easy path through the mixing chamber without too much restriction but at the same time actually mixing the filament together. So I started off with very few twists and turns, shall we say, inside the mixing chamber. So I wasn't really expecting it to be a, uh, a really good homogenous mix. But as you can see, it, there is an improvement. It's better than the Diamond 5 color. But importantly, it works. Um, the input stage, shall we say, the, the heat breaks work, there are no leaks, and the filament combines properly up to the mixing chamber. The hot end is actually smaller than the Diamond 5 color when you take into account that it needs a great big 60 mil fan blowing down on it. Um, it's six input rather than five. And importantly, I can change the nozzle whenever I want with the Diamond 5 color. I have to change the whole brass assembly, which um, comes with its heat brakes screwed into it and it's, uh, it's expensive to do. So I can put pretty much any nozzle on here I want and if I wear it, if I use some abrasive filament and it wears a nozzle out, I can just change it, which is good. So I've got something I can work with now that doesn't leak. It's liquid cooled, it doesn't block. All I've got to do now is um, sort out the mixing chamber and get it to mix a bit better than it's doing now. I did do a multicolor print, which is actually a nine color print. It's just a big vase, nothing special, but I, ran it through my little Python script and put uh, a tool change in on every layer and it's just a random tool change. So actually I use 10 tools, um, zero to nine, one of which is clear, but we can say it's a nine color print. Um, so the colors are black, red, yellow, clear, blue, white, and then um, mixing red and white is kind of pink, uh, yellow and blue, gives green, blue and red gives purple. So those are the colors I used. Then just randomly change the color every layer. There's 997 layers. So there are 997 color changes. 
Uh, so I printed it without doing any pause in between, just change it all and then the, uh, the purge from one filament to another happens during the infill. By the time it gets to the outer perimeter, the color is coming through nice and pure. So this is the, uh, this is the final result. And that was about a seven hour print, so I managed to do that without any leaks or anything, so quite pleased with that. I'll just do a, a quick separate video showing that print going on. So I made some progress, it'll probably be some while before I give any further updates. Um, I've got lots of experimenting to do with the mixing hot end and I also want to play around with this dual input hot end and see what that can do. But I won't be posting any update, updates on, uh, on YouTube about that one. So um, until next time, thanks.